Today I'm talking with Alex Duty, a water engineer who's helped water reclamation facilities in both cold and warm weather climates to optimize, upgrade, and expand their processes. Alex is an expert in phosphorus removal during wastewater treatment. So she's gonna give me the latest information on why that matters, how water utilities are dealing with phosphorus, and what might be coming next in the field. Alex, thank you so much for being here today. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me, Andrew. How and why did phosphorus removal become a major priority for clean water agencies and for regulators? Absolutely. Um, it's been a priority for a long time because we noticed that there were issues with the quality of our surface waters, um, the most notably being in the Gulf of Mexico, the hypoxic zone where we don't have enough dissolved oxygen for, for fish to survive. And in the Chesapeake Bay, those were some of the most noteworthy uh, problems. Regulations have been slowly developed um, in order to make sure that we're not putting excessive nitrogen and phosphorus into our waters uh, that'll, that impair our surface water quality. I know you've been involved in some pretty cool research and you keep track of what's going on around the industry. What emerging processes or technologies in, in phosphorus removal are intriguing to you? An area that uh, has been a big focus um, for a long time, but we're still not quite there, is, is an engineered algae recovery system. They, uh, we're trying to prevent phosphorus from getting into our water bodies by removing it in the wastewater process in order to prevent excessive algae growth in our rivers. But algae are really great uh, removers of nutrients. So um, there are a lot of folks out there that are trying to figure out ways to engineer systems to use algae in a beneficial way within the, the fence line of a wastewater plant so that we're truly turning our wastewater plants into a water resource recovery facility and not just removing the nutrients, but recovering them. Since phosphorus is a limited resource that we are mining um, in order to produce our fertilizers. Water reclamation facilities in New England who are under the regulation of EPA Region 1, uh, many of these facilities have radically reduced phosphorus input to meet their permit conditions. From your perspective, working uh, with a lot of these facilities and observing this process, can you talk a little bit about the ingenuity that it took to make that possible, to, to reduce that phosphorus output so substantially? Sure. Yeah, I mean, 20 years ago, when we first started trying to meet this challenge, a lot of people weren't sure if meeting 0.1 total phosphorus, uh, 0.1 milligrams per liter was, was really possible on a consistent and reliable basis. Being forced to meet those limits forced us to really sharpen our pencil on a variety of things. Um, how to accurately measure down to the, such low concentrations was one challenge. Um, how, what types of technologies were able to meet that? Um, understanding what types of phosphorus make up make up uh, the the total phosphorus limit that you're required to meet in your permit, and um, the industry really rose to the challenge to figure out how to do it um, effectively and reliably. Um, and a lot of things that we didn't think were possible 20 years ago are now showing are. Uh, while uh, removing phosphorus uh, might be a, a totally good thing in, in terms of protecting the receiving waters, in terms of protecting ecosystems, many times in order to achieve that removal, you're putting things into the water in order to get the phosphorus out and, and thereby changing the characteristics of that water. So there's a bit of a balancing act there, right? Some facilities have to meet fairly stringent metals limits in addition to phosphorus. And uh, we, we, again, we have saw this in New England uh, with some of our clients there that have to meet uh, pretty stringent copper limits, um, aluminum limits. And one of the challenges with that, when you're trying to also get to low level phosphorus removal is you have to add metal salt coagulants in order to convert the soluble component of the phosphorus into a particle and a solid that can then be removed through filtration or other solids removal processes. And when you're adding these metal salt coagulants, you're inherently adding more metals to your wastewater. So facilities that do have to meet uh, stringent effluent metal limits in addition to their low-level phosphorus, they really do have to walk that tightrope balancing act in order to meet both. Alex, this has been super interesting. Thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> Alex and her colleagues continue to evolve the water industry away from wastewater treatment and towards resource recovery. 
One recent project that I think is amazing is in Des Moines, Iowa, where a wastewater plant is now generating pipeline quality natural gas that's sent directly to the grid. If that sounds intriguing to you, click below to learn more.